If you shoot any outdoor photography, portraits, wildlife, landscapes, sports, the app I'm about to show you can completely change your photography, especially when you're shooting in a new environment. If you're doing travel photography, you're going to a location you've never done before, and it's completely free. The sun completely changes what your photos look like depending on where it is in the sky, but that's just not very predictable. I mean, we know the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west, but it's never quite in the same place, and depending on the height of the trees, the buildings, the mountains around you, it might not actually rise above the horizon and give you direct light until much later in the morning, or it might set behind mountains much earlier in the day. I have an app that will allow you to predict precisely when the sun will crest behind these sort of 3D obstructions, and it's gonna change a lot for you. I do a lot of my planning on a smartphone. I use PhotoPills and the photographer's ephemeris mostly. Those are good at predicting the location of the sun and the moon, and you can drop yourself on a map and figure out exactly where you are and where the sun and moon will rise. But they do not paint a complete picture, and unfortunately, I don't know of any mobile app that gives you a complete picture. So the app I'm gonna recommend is only for the Mac and PC users out here. So I have my MacBook Pro here and I'm gonna fire up Google Earth, which is completely free. Let's get into the app and go to one of my favorite places on Earth, and that's Dumbo Park. The thing about Dumbo is it's not in Manhattan, it's in Brooklyn, but it's the best place to see the Manhattan skyline. And if you've seen an iconic skyline photo of Manhattan, this is probably where it was taken from. So we zoom in here and here you can see Dumbo Park. It's already a really useful tool. I'm zooming in and out here. I can tilt the camera up and down by holding down the command key on a Mac. Honestly, I never ever remember the keyboard shortcuts. I always just kind of end up experimenting. That's fine, it's cool. Google Earth is super fun to play with, but here's where it becomes a useful tool for photographers. Grab the little street view guy here and then drag him where you want him. Bam. Depending on where you dropped him, he might switch into Google Street View, which are these amazing sort of 360 photos that exist for almost every place on the planet. The Street View photos are useful. They're 360, they're super detailed to let you know what buildings and mountains and trees look like, but the ground level view is actually more useful. And you'll see this little switch here, it's a building, and when you click that, it switches to the 3D view. And right away, everything looks much worse, right? Suddenly the trees become all blocky and it becomes very low res, but it's still going to give us a better sense for what's going on. These are made from satellite images and airplane images, sort of doing math to 3D map, even individual bushes, so it's not gonna be perfect. Now, once you're in ground level view, you can just click to go where you wanna go. So I'm just gonna click to navigate myself out towards the shoreline here, and now I'm going to command and drag to change my perspective a little bit and check my composition. Why don't we move over here, a little closer to the bridge. And so this is useful for just picking my spot that I want to shoot at. And you can see from this spot, I'm close to the bridge, but the bridge still kind of cuts off these buildings here. So let me just change my position a little bit. Let me check this other spot on the beach over here and then move over. The bridge is still cutting into the buildings a little bit, but you can see them above it, so I think it provides a little bit more depth. Now, I can also adjust my focal length while I'm here. I can drag the slider along the right side of the screen here, and it doesn't tell you the exact focal length, but I think you start out at around like 30 millimeters, so if you zoom in a little bit, that can give you some idea. And this kind of allows you to frame up the perfect composition. Now, let's get into controlling the sun. There's an icon here with the sun, and so I'll click that, and now you can see I can set the specific time and date. By default, it sets it to the current time and date. Let's say I have a hotel room in Brooklyn, and I wanna get up early and get to Dumbo, and I wanna know exactly what time the sunlight is going to illuminate the buildings in Manhattan, because I wanna sleep as late as possible, right? So I'm just gonna adjust the slider and scrub it over until I get to the right time and date, and you can see the rendering here is illuminating the buildings at about 6.45 a.m. 
New York City Sunrise Sunset Times. Now, technically the sun rises at 634, so there, I just let you sleep an extra 10 minutes. Scrub forward a little bit and we can see how the lighting really changes pretty realistically. Of course, it's not rendering clouds, which is actually too bad. I wish I could do that, but it can't. So you can see here, the lighting becomes really flat a little bit later on. It's not nearly as interesting. At around 1040 or so, the sun shifts far enough along the side here towards the south that we get these deep shadows on the buildings and now the buildings are very high contrast. So this is a good thing to note. You can kind of understand exactly how the lighting is going to change throughout the day depending on the effect that you want from the photo. Scrub forward a little bit further and we see not really much happens. Now the shadows start to shift a little bit around 1.30 and then by the time we hit 2.45, now all the buildings are in shadow from this perspective. So if I show up there at three o'clock the buildings are going to look terrible because they're in shadow. There's going to be no color, they're going to be very dark, and it's like, I might as well not take the picture. But wait, if we go forward a little bit more in time, bam, around 6 o'clock, the sun starts heading towards the skyline. And if I scrub forward until about mm, 6.30 or so, the sun is going to be setting behind the buildings, which could be a pretty amazing photo. That's really great to know because the sunset time is at 7.12 p.m. So if you got there for the sunset and you were there at 7.12, well, the sun would actually be long gone. So now you know you need to show up about 45 minutes before the sunset in order to get the sun falling behind the buildings. That's a big enough difference to make or break a shot. So now that I kind of know exactly when the sun is going to be behind the buildings, I might even decide to fine tune my composition a little bit. Maybe I want to put the sun directly between two buildings. That's no problem. I can just pan around, click where I want to be, and move up the shoreline. Maybe zoom out a little bit to simulate a wider angle. And now, just by exploring the shoreline from the computer, I know that there's another spot I can go stand. And that gives me yet another perspective, but maybe I need a wider angle lens or I need to shoot a panorama for this particular location. Wait, <laughs> let's say this is the composition that you like with the Brooklyn Bridge off to the right side and the entire Manhattan skyline dominating the scene. But the sun is off to the far, far left and you want the sun to be a little bit more to the right. Maybe the answer is to shoot at a different time of year. It's September right now, but no problem. We can just zoom out on the timeline here and check out where the sun is going to be at different times of the year. We can see in the middle of the winter, it actually sets far off towards the south from New York, so that's not gonna work for us, but maybe the summer can work. There we go, if I hit that same spot right around summer solstice, July 20th, then I can get the sun setting behind those buildings with that composition I wanted. What a powerful tool this is for predicting the future, for planning your vacation. If shots like this are important to you, you might even choose different times of year to visit a particular spot. Here's a tip for the astrophotographers out there. Google has mapped the entire Earth in 3D, so you can visit any location and see the mountains and scrub through here to see precisely where the Milky Way is going to fall between different mountains. It doesn't help you in New York City. You're not going to see the Milky Way there. But trust me, it will work on any place in the planet. I'd love to hear your tips for how you plan photo shoots, how you get light right the first time without having to visit a location over and over again. I also heavily rely on weather tracking apps. There are people out there who are obsessed with weather and they want not just radar of clouds, but predictions of clouds. And there are a couple of different apps that will do that. I don't have one in particular that I love. I flipped through a few different ones and I try to decide, okay, actually it looks like from this position, the sun is gonna be blocked by the clouds over here. There's still not a great way to do that. I would love it if it were integrated into Google apps or something else though. Hopefully we'll see something like that in the future. Don't forget to subscribe for lots more tips, camera reviews, and a live show every Thursday at four o'clock where we review your photos on different themes. Also check out my video book, Stunning Digital Photography, the number one photography book in the world. It includes 14 hours of video training free. So even if you don't like to read, you can still learn. We have books on Lightroom and Photoshop to help your post-processing. And the Art and Science video training series takes your photography to the next level, including like really in-depth planning like this. Check it out. If you don't love any of those things, get it from us and I'll give you a free 
money back return if you don't love it. No questions asked. Thanks and bye.